Hello everyone. It is my great pleasure to meet you all through online service. Uh, I am Pastor Taeuk Gang, who is ministering in Good News Eswatini Manjini Church. Today we will read Matthew chapter 8. We will read Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I, I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, Go, and he goes. And to another, Come, and he comes. And to my servants, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. When we live our spiritual life, we all know the faith is really important. And when we receive salvation, we can only receive salvation by faith. So, this salvation and even our spiritual life is not based on our works, but based on the faith in Jesus Christ. And as Bible empathizes, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says, The just shall live by faith. So entire in the Bible, God empathized. Faith is really important point of our spiritual life. And I believe that you all want to live faithful life. And if you feel that your faith is little or weak, you try to have a strong and solid faith. Then at this time, I would like to share what is biblical faith and what are the different uh, faith all the people having under God. So actually, when we believe in God, we have different stage of faith. So, according to the scripture saying, and through several stories of the Bible, I will introduce the different stages of faith. The first, first stage is the stage of believing in only oneself. So, in this first stage, people who are belongs to this first stage, they focused on themselves, and they do believe in themselves only. So they don't want to listen to other people, and even though God is speaking to us, or through the servant of God, God wants to deliver us the message or the plan or goals of God, this first stage people, they are not interested in listening to the word of God at all. So we can simply say those who do not believe in God or people who are not interested in spiritual life, they belong to this first stage of faith, believing in oneself. As a one of the example of this first stage, we can understand and read uh, through reading 2 King chapter 7. In 2 King chapter 7, in Samaria, they were starving and uh, uh, they were uh, starving without having food. Because of this situation, all people were very miserable. At that time, prophet Elisha, God sent his prophet to prophesy tomorrow about this time there will be a plenty of food and there will be enough food for all Samaritan to eat. At that time, prophet Elisha prophesied, Hear the word of the Lord. 
tomorrow about this time. So, prophet is now speaking the word of the Lord. He is not speaking his own will. He is not speaking his own words. He is speaking the word of the Lord. So when he prophesied tomorrow about this time, a fine flower for a sekel and two barley loaf for a sekel, but at that moment, an officer who was there in Samaria, on whose hands the king leaned, this person, this officer, he is a responsible person and he is trusty person. So he was, I think he was a capable man. That's why even king leaned on this officer. So this officer, he is filled with his own common sense, with his own understanding, his own idea. So he didn't have any space to accept the word of the Lord through prophet Elisha. Although Elisha was speaking the word of the Lord and hear the word of the Lord, this is what clearly Elisha speak to the entire Samaria. But an officer, this officer, he was trusty man according to his own understanding and he was a responsible person and he was a smart one. That's why he didn't accept anyone's voice, anyone's uh, words. While he was living his life, he lived self-centered life and arrogant life trusting only himself. That is why he automatically closed his mind, closed his ear, and closed his eyes. Although he see, he could not see. He, although he hear, he could not hear the proper word of the Lord. That's why he rejected. He only trusted himself, thinking he is right. I am right. I don't need to even to listen what you are saying. So what does he say? If the Lord opened the window in heaven, could this thing be? So he is he's insisting within his own small understanding, within his own capacity, even if the Lord God opened the window in heaven, such things can never happen. This is how he easily concluded this word. So as a result, what happened? Yes, this officer, as Prophet Elisha prophesied, you will see it, but you shall not eat of it. So when people of cloud came out of the gate of Samaria, he was trampled and he was stepped by the people and ruined his life. He was dead. Isn't it so miserable? Yes, this is the result of the people who believe only themselves, even in our spiritual life, or when you live your life with other people in the society, or when you have fellowship with brothers and sisters one another in the church. If you have such mind, if you have such closed mind and belongs to this first stage of faith, then you wouldn't be able to associate with other people. And furthermore, for the relationship with God, you won't be able to receive any blessing, any grace, any works of God in your life. Then, if we go into the second stage of faith, the second stage of faith is someone believing in oneself and accept within his own understanding, accept other people's words, or even accept word of God within their own understanding and within their own uh, common sense. Then what will happen in such a stage? This second stage people are still based their trust on themselves. They rely on their own understanding own capacity. That's why they cannot accept something beyond their own understanding. They are not able to 
receive beyond the beyond their own imagination. So through this second stage, we can understand if you happen to have this second stage of mind, you will think I am right. But I will listen to you if you speak sense. If I understand what you are saying, then I will accept it. But if you are speaking something nonsense according to my common sense, I will definitely reject. This is the second stage of faith. So for, for an example of this second stage, we can read Mary and Martha story. Actually, Mary and Martha was waiting for Jesus coming when, he, when their brother, Nazareth, was sick. So when they sent the people to come, to ask Jesus to come and help uh, their sick brother, Nazareth, they were hoping and they had that expectation that if Jesus would come, then Jesus would heal our brother. But actually, while they were waiting, Nazareth, unfortunately, he died. So Jesus came after Nazareth died. So Martha, Mary, they were so disappointed. And Martha heard that Jesus came. So he went, she went out and met Jesus. And now Martha expressed her disappointment to Jesus. Jesus, if you had come earlier, my brother would not have died. Jesus, you should have come earlier. My brother Nazareth, he is dead now. When Martha expressed her heart, what did Jesus say? Your brother will rise again. Yes, although Jesus speak to her, your brother will rise again. Mary, Martha, they have never seen Jesus raise dead person up. And according to their own common sense, according to their own capacity, it is really nonsense a dead person to rise up. So although Jesus was saying, if you believe in my words, you would see the glory of God. But still Martha is believing in Jesus and speaking with Jesus within her own understanding. Yes, I know my brother will rise, uh, will rise up on the day of resurrection. So now Jesus is not speaking about the day of resurrection, but now, Mary and Martha confined it in their own thoughts, in their own capacity, or within their own common sense. So when Jesus is speaking something out of their own common sense, something out of their own box, they couldn't accept it. They couldn't agree. Everyone, don't we live such life when we live our spiritual life? Or when you live with someone else, some other people around you, or when you have fellowship amongst brothers and sisters in the church, do you really have open-minded to listen what other people say? Although I cannot agree, I, although I cannot understand, do you really lean your ears to them and listen what other people are saying? Furthermore, if that is the word of God, if God is speaking to us, then no matter what, we should accept His words and we should agree and uh, we should receive their words. But we often reject because I don't think so. I don't agree with that. Then we easily reject it. When I live my spiritual life, I used to live such spiritual life for a long time. And I often also tend to think that yes, I am right, but what God is speaking, what pastor is saying, what other people is saying, I don't really understand. I cannot agree. Then I usually reject it, and I didn't even have a mind to think or listen carefully. 
So as a result of living such life, I had a lot of conflict and I had no choice but to live an uh, isolated life and live a very pitiful and miserable life. End up, while I was ministering, my ministry went very uh, wrong way. So when I found myself, what's wrong with my spiritual life? What's wrong with my ministry? I tried to read Bible, I tried to witness, I tried to uh, do many things according to the teachings, of the, uh, the teachings of this church. But why my life is not going well? Why my life and spiritual life is not going all right? I was so depressed and I really didn't know what was wrong of my spiritual life. At that time, I discovered, aha, I listened to the word of God. I also listen to the word of servants. I also listen to other people's, but within my own common sense, within my own boundary. So within my own understanding, sometimes I receive the words. But when someone speaks something nonsense according to my sense, then I easily reject it. Everyone, there was a a blind association meeting. All the blinds gathered together to discuss about one, ele- uh, one animal. So that day, they started to discuss and debate about the elephant. You know how does the elephant look like? I have experience of touching elephant. It was so great. Oh, do you have that experience? I did too. I ha- so did I. So many now, these uh, blind people, they share their idea and their experience about elephant. So one started to say, hey, everyone, you know how does elephant look like? Elephant is like a very sharp spear. Why? Because elephant, when I touched, elephant was very sharp. This first blind, he touched the the tusk of the elephant. He touched only the tusk of elephant, so he easily and simply think elephant is like a spear. Now, next person, next blind is speaking to this guy. Hey, I think you touched the wrong elephant. When I touched the elephant, Elephant was like a long and a little bit thick snake. You know why? Because when I touched it was long and it was kind of a thick and long animal. So I simply think it is like a snake. So now people started to uh, speaking each other. This second blind, he touched actually the trunk of the elephant. That's why he simply thought now elephant is like a long snake. But now third one, third blind is saying, hey, 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 you guys, you are all wrong. I touched the real elephant. Elephant is like a wide uh, carpet. It was very wide and it was like, I felt like a carpet. You know, where did he touch? Yes, he touched the ear part, the the ear part of the elephant. And now next one is saying, hey, you guys are all telling a lie. I touched the big part of elephant. It seems you touched only one part. But when I touched the whole body part, elephant was like a strong word. It was very strong and giant. It was very big. Because he touched the body of the elephant, he simply says, elephant is like a big world. Now, the vice chairman of this meeting, blind association, He was very annoyed. 
Hey, you guys, what are you saying? You have no right to speak about the elephant. I recently went to zoo and touched the real elephant. You know how does an elephant look like? Elephant was like a very big tree. Can you imagine which part of elephant he touched? Yes, he only touched the leg of the elephant. Finally, the chairman, he closed the meeting. Hey, you guys, you are always fighting and speaking nonsense things to each other. We are all blind. I will conclude the meeting. Elephant is like a thin rope. Why? Because when I touched the elephant, it was little tiny, felt, I felt like a rope. Can you imagine which part of this chairman touched? Yes, he touched the tail part of elephant. Among all these blind people speaking about the elephant, who was right? Yes, they are all wrong. They only experienced and part of it. They only touched each part of the elephant. No one can tell how does elephant look like precisely. We are living such blind spiritual life. We only think within our own small box, within our own experience. Ah, I experienced it. Ah, I have seen it before. Oh, ah, I, have, I have done it before. This is how we easily think about God, think about everything about or around this world. So if we tend to trust ourselves and staying within our box, we are not able to receive the word of God as it is. Everyone, if you are in the room or in a, uh, in a building, please try to look outside. Then if you want to look outside within your building where you are, you can only see through what? Window or door. If window is the triangle, I mean the uh, rectangle or uh, square shape, you can only see outside in this small square image. If window is the round, then you can only see outside through this round shape. But does it mean this word looks within, uh, uh, this word is in this small square shape? If you are looking outside through the round shape of window, does it mean that this whole world is within this small round shape? No. If you really want to see this word, you must come out of the earth and you, can, you should see and look at this world, look at this earth out of the, out of this uh, earth through satellite. This is how we can see this whole earth with precise view, isn't it? Yes. Likewise, if you really want to meet God, if you really want to have true faith, if you want to experience true power of God, then what is really important? We have to come out of our small box, small experience, small understanding. No matter how many experiences you may have, no matter how you are educated person, no matter how you are old, whatever good experience, good environment, good uh, things you may have, but that is within our small little humans concept, human limitation. So we need to all recognize and acknowledge that ah, we humans are very much limited. We are like this blind. We only think and we believe within our small territory box. So for us to believe in God, we need to come out of that. We need to come out of our own common sense and come out of our own understanding. So if you experience of such spiritual life, then we can go into the third stage of faith. Third stage of faith is the one who 
believe oneself, but occasionally accept the word of God and accept other people's words even beyond of our own understanding, beyond one's common sense. So if these people, uh, if, if anyone belongs to this third type of, third, third stage of faith, then you will be able to accept something you don't really understand, something you cannot really agree, because you think, I am not always right. I am not perfect. I cannot understand everything within my own small capacity, then you will start opening your heart to accept other people's words and even other word of, word of God, although it is beyond of your understanding, beyond your own uh, common sense. So as an example of this third stage of spiritual faith, we can talk about the Peter. Peter, when he, was a, when he followed Jesus as a disciple, one of the disciples, Peter really passionately to listen to the word of Jesus. Sometimes he followed the word of God, although he could not agree, although he could not understand it. So Peter, when he saw Jesus walking on the sea, he was so marveled. And he asked Jesus, Lord, if you are the Lord Jesus, please allow me to walk on the sea like you. Do you think it's possible? Do you think it was within the uh, understanding of Peter? Do you really think that human is possible to walk on the sea? It's actually out of our own common sense. It is beyond of our own understanding. But Peter could ask such because he believes in Jesus, believes in the power of Jesus. If Lord, if you are the Jesus, if you are the Lord Jesus, please allow me also to walk in the sea. So when Jesus, yes, come out and walk on the sea, now Peter could try to reach his footstep on the sea. It's, this is how Peter experienced the amazing power of Jesus Christ. Although he couldn't understand, oh, am I possible to walk on the sea? Is it, as a human being, is it possible for human to walk on the sea? No, it doesn't make sense. This is normal disciples' understanding, normal disciples' faith. But Peter went beyond of his own understanding and he could walk on the sea, believing in Jesus Christ. But one last problem was, Peter occasionally received the word of Jesus and word of God beyond of his own understanding, but he was still based on trusting in himself. His trust, his faith was still based on himself, that's why if God, if Jesus speaks something which he can never accept it, just like uh, the example of Peter denied uh, Jesus Christ. On the day uh, when Jesus fed, fed disciple of Jesus, and in, on, in that day, Jesus spoke to everyone, you will all deny me. And when the shepherds being stricken, all the sheep are going to scatter. So at that time, Peter said, Oh, no, 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 Lord, no. I, I will never deny you, Lord. Even if I die, I will never deny you. So although Peter has experience of following the word of Jesus beyond his common sense, beyond his understanding, when Jesus speaks something he cannot agree, he cannot accept, he, he uh, denied that word of Jesus. 
although Jesus was speaking, although that was the word of God, Peter had the power to deny that word of the Lord. Why? Yes, because he believed in Jesus occasionally, but his foundation, his spiritual foundation was still based on himself, trusting his thought, trusting his experience, trusting his own understanding. When Jesus speaks something he can never agree, he rejected that. No, it doesn't make sense. I will never deny you, Lord. Even if I die, I will never ever do it. But Jesus said, You will deny me three times. Je Peter could not accept it. Peter thought, I will never do it. No, no, no. Never, never, never. As a result, what happened? Yes, at the end, Peter denied Jesus three times. As Jesus said, as Jesus said, he denied Jesus Christ three times at that night. When he discovered himself, denied Jesus three times according to the word of Jesus saying, he could not trust himself anymore. Oh, I thought that I am so much confident. I am so much sure that I will keep and follow my determination, my resolution. But Peter denied Jesus according to the saying of Jesus. At that time, Peter could enter into the fourth stage. Now, the fourth stage of faith is denying oneself completely and only believe in the Word of God. Since you are not able to trust yourself, since we discover that I am a liar, I cannot trust anything within myself, that's why we can simply only believe the word of God. One of the example, as I said, Peter, he followed his thoughts, he trusted himself, but as a result, when he discovered that he became a failure, he was a liar, he didn't really follow his own strong will and strong determination, when he saw he did according to Jesus said, now he crumbled himself down completely. Oh no, I am not trusty man. I am not trustworthy. I am a liar. I am a deceitful man. This is how he discovered his true image. Everyone, when we read the Bible, God often speaks about human's righteousness, human's honest. When God sees us human, is there any honest man? Is there any royal man? Is there any trustworthy man? In Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, when God saw, here there is a perspective of God. When God saw us man, when God saw the whole world, now here, God said, God diagnosed, and God finally speak about us human. In his perspective, he is saying, the wickedness of man was great in the earth. The only the man, every intent of the thoughts of the man was only evil continually. When God saw us, we are only deceitful, we are only evil, we are only dirty, filthy human beings. So, in the book of Isaiah, the Bible says, Our righteousness is like a filthy rag. And God does not accept, God cannot receive any human's righteousness. No matter how good we bring to God, in the eyes of God, we are completely nothing, and worthless human being. So if we discover our true image through the eyes of God, it is not that you can feel. It is not that you can agree. It is not that you also see in that way. But why? Because this is beyond of our capacity, beyond of our own understanding, 
beyond of our own standard. So if we want to accept the standard of God, we, sh we should not follow our feeling. We should not follow our common sense, five senses. When you discover that our five senses are always limited, then we can accept the word of God, God's diagnosis, God's sentence, God's final words, as he says. For example, when you are sick, oh, I have a stomachache, oh, I have this strange symptom, then you will go to hospital. When you go to a hospital, where you will see a doctor, then doctor will diagnose your body. Although you know your symptoms, you cannot tell what's the problem of your body. You cannot tell what disease that you are suffering from. So you must show your body to a doctor. So doctor has to check and diagnose you. As a result, he will give you the final diagnosis. What is that? Doctor will say, oh, unfortunately, you have a cancer in your body. Oh, you're, you have an ulcer on your stomach. Oh, you have this and that disease. This is how doctor is going to give us the final diagnosis. Yes, who can diagnose us? Who can tell us about our human heart? Who can really simply tell us you are in such stage of faith? Not myself. I cannot tell about myself because I am always living within my own capacity, within my own understanding. That's why we need our servant. We need our spiritual uh, overseer who can check our body and who can see and who can tell us this is how you are living. This is who you are. This is how you are living in this life of faith. Before, I didn't have such overseer or spiritual shepherd in my life. It is not because I didn't actually have, literally have, but I had that pastor and also spiritual father and spiritual uh, pastor who can lead me, who can teach me, who can diagnose me, but actually I rejected. I ignored, I, I ignored them. I didn't receive. Why? Because when he is speaking something beyond my own understanding, I simply reject it and I simply ignore it. So I was living like Mary and Martha. While I was thinking, while I was following the word of God, while I was living spiritual life, if I think, uh-uh, no, I don't agree, I don't understand, then I simply reject it, although that was the word of God and word of the servants. But one day, I experienced a great failure in my spiritual life and in my ministry. While I was trying myself to, to do good ministry, I experienced, oh no, I can't go beyond of this. I can't do that. Why am I living such life? Why am I living such uh, untrustworthy man, uh, man's life? So when I discovered myself, when I discovered my, my disability and my incapability, now I could humble myself. Actually, God humbled my heart. And when I stood before the servant of God, uh, Pastor Oksu Park, he spoke to me and he diagnosed my spiritual life. You have received salvation from your sin, but you have never denied yourself and accepted Jesus as your master. If I accept Jesus as my master, then what can I say before Jesus? Do I need to understand as Jesus understands? Do I need to agree what Jesus is speaking to me? No, the master and servant's relationship is not in a relationship that the servants can follow master within understanding, within common sense. Servants actually obey and submit to the master no matter what, whether these servants understand the master or not, 
whether these servants are willing or unwilling, servants has no reason, has no freedom to choose or decide. Servants is just a part of the master. So if master says anything, servants has no choice but to follow in all commandment. So pastor, he spoke to me. You have received salvation from your sin. You believed that, but you have never accepted Jesus as your master. That was my first time to discover my true image, true self. Oh, yes. Pastor, what you are speaking is, tell, is really true. I had no choice but to agree. Why? Because what he diagnosed, what, when he saw my spiritual life, I did not receive the guidance of God and receive the word of God completely because I was based on my own uh, self-trusting foundation. So since that time, God showed me the right way of spiritual life. Right way of spiritual life means is denying my own thoughts, my own self, my own complete set whether I understand it or not, whether I agree it or not. Actually, I didn't need to fear or I didn't need to finalize within my own common sense whatsoever Jesus said, whatsoever God says, whatsoever servant of God saying, if that is the word of God, then I should simply say, Amen. Everyone, when you listen to the word, and true thinking, within your own small little brain. Is this, is this really good? Is it going to work in me? Am I really going to get a benefit? So we receive all that, but we listen all that word, but we busy filtering. Oh, yes, according to my experience, it was good. Yes, I experienced of that. Yes, this is good. Oh, no, this is bad. Oh, no, this is horrible. I can't do this. Why? Because we are based on our own self. We have our self, our understanding, our way, our own capacity. That's why we cannot receive the word of God 100% and we cannot receive only the word of God. Pastor Park often shared his testimony when he was age 19, when he failed to enter into the uh, military army officer. Or, Officer, uh, officer's army. Then when he failed that, he discovered himself. Oh, I failed in everything. I trusted myself. I was good. I was smart. But that was not the truth. If I follow my thought, my way, my own understanding, I will end up live miserable life. Since then, he started to only focus on the word of God. Everyone, today we read Matthew chapter 8. When Jesus met this centurion, Jesus praised this centurion's faith. What does Jesus say? Oh, surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Jesus is saying this centurion's faith is great faith. Why? Sometimes Jesus rebuked his disciple. Oh, you have little faith. If you had faith as mustard seed, when you command this mountain to move, then it will move. So Jesus often rebuked his disciples, but why Jesus is speaking such words? Oh, you centurion has a, such a great faith? Yes, because centurion, he accepted, he stood before the before Jesus Christ as the servant. He, he, uh, he, um, uh, he accepted himself as the servant and Jesus is the master. Jesus has authority whatsoever he says, every cre creature is going to obey to your words. So, Centurion is saying, I am not worthy uh, to receive you under my roof. If you only speak a word, only speak a word and my servants will be healed. What faith is that? Yes, this faith 
is the stage of uh, the last stage of uh, stage four faith. What faith? Denying himself, not following his own thought, not agree, not following his own common sense. He solely depends on the word of Jesus. Whatsoever Jesus says, if you say that, that's the final word. So you don't need to fill with your own feeling, with your emotion, with your understanding, with your experience. Why? Because the word of Jesus, word of God is just the finer words. Everyone, I hope you could receive this word of God as it is. So in whatever situation, whatever circumstances you are going through, if you can reach this stage for spiritual faith, then you can receive abundant blessing and grace from God. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you next week. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for giving us such a wonderful and blissful service through online. May God bless all the audience and all the participants. May God open our hearts to accept the word of God just like this centurion. Thank you for giving us this precious time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.